Guess who is celebrating 80 years of service in the city of Newark? Up next on the Giblin Report. Welcome to the Giblin Report. I'm Assemblyman Tom Giblin, representing the 34th Legislative District, which includes Clifton, East Orange, Montclair, and Orange. On today's show, I am pleased to welcome Victor Cirillo, the Executive Director of the Newark Housing Authority. Uh, welcome, Victor, to the Giblin Thank you. Report. Thank you for having me. <coughs> Victor, uh, Executive Director of the Newark Housing yes. Authority. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. Maybe tell us a little bit about the Newark Housing Authority. Sure. Uh, it's one of the oldest housing authorities uh, in the country. I believe this year is celebrating its 80th uh, anniversary. Correct. So what kind of responsibility do you have as the executive director? Sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Assemblyman, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's always an honor to be in your presence uh, and being uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, some uh, stories with you. Uh, and also being here at Montclair State University, my uh, uh, this is my alma mater. Okay, good. And, you're, uh, you're done well. Every time I come uh, here, my the, the value of my degree goes up. Uh, Dr. Cole's doing a great job, so I commend her for that. I'm sure she'll uh, appreciate that yes. endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, the Newark Housing Authority. As a matter of fact, uh, Assemblyman, today is today's the actual birthday. Uh, there's a charter with today's date on it in uh, 1939. Uh, I'm sorry, 1938, when it was uh, created 80 years ago by an act of the city council. Uh, as it relates to the uh, responsibilities as the executive director, uh, it's, uh, it's an agency uh, that manages about 12,000 units uh, throughout the city. Is uh, that number increasing or, or is it down from what it used to be? It has high? decreased from its height, yes. Absolutely, it has decreased from its height, as you recall. Uh, you had large-scale uh, units some years ago, now you're getting into... Correct. A lower level, right? Correct. More scattered housing uh, as opposed to the uh, uh, old high rises uh, that uh, didn't have a long lifespan. But uh, what's interesting, <clears throat> speaking of 1938, is that uh, the, in the, the first properties that were built are still around. This, we still have them active. Uh, the Pennington Courts, the Hyatt Courts, the uh, uh, Stephen Crane Village, they're still around from 1940, 1939. So that scatter site style seems to have been like the actual policy as opposed to the, the high rises at, at, at the Housing Authority's height. The mayor of Newark then was Myra C. Ellenstein. Yes, uh, correct. In that particular uh, era. Uh, and of course, uh, a name that uh, is really uh, associated with the housing authority in its early days and uh, an individual who served in many uh, years as the executive director was uh, Lou Danzig. Was, was uh, Mr. Danzig involved in the early days of the housing authority? Um, Mr. Danzig uh, was an attorney that grew up in the South Ward. Uh, he was, uh, uh, he passed the law exam, uh, the bar exam in 1930. Uh, initially, he went to work for um, uh, Mayor uh, Ralph Villani at that time, Mayor Ralph Villani, uh, who was a councilman. And one of, the, um, one of the responsibilities was overseeing the housing authority. And Mr. Danzig, as an aide, uh, learned about the operations of the housing authority, eventually became a property manager at Pennington Court in Hyatt Court in the Ironbound uh, in, the early f uh, in the early 30s. Um, by 1940, I'm sorry, 1930, uh, 40, 44, 45, he, he uh, ascended to the executive directorship. You know, your background, I mean, this is a, a tremendous responsibility you have <clears throat> as the executive director. Uh, I believe you came previously from uh, Passaic. Correct. Uh, how did you get involved in this field, period? Sure. I uh, started here at Montclair State University. I uh, went to the co-op office and I looked up the, uh, the, the listings and there was a listing for uh, the Dover Housing Authority. They were looking for a staff person uh, in Morris County. And I didn't know what the housing was about. So uh, I... What, you know, what year was that? 1999. 
1999. It was the spring semester, and uh, I signed up for the uh, for the co-op for the internship, and I ended up being hired by summertime. They liked my work and my my. Uh, my uh, my work ethic and and my interest and that's how I ended up in the public housing field. And Started. how many years were you in Passaic prior to coming to Newark? Sure, in Passaic I was there for ten years, between two thousand and seven and uh, two thousand seventeen. Well, I know you have a, a board of commissioners, so I mean, like looking at the, you know, you have a, a mayor who's I guess seeking his second term, Mayor Roz Baraka. Correct. So that's only a short period of time, four years, but. Uh, You've been on the job about a year, year and a half. It, it's actually uh, some of It's been five months. That's all. Well, it's, it's, it's been five I months, and uh, we've, <sighs> we've made significant progress in those five months, I believe. Well, if you were going to list maybe three or four uh, immediate goals, what what are you trying to tackle? Sure, absolutely. Number one, uh, and this happens to be one of the mayor's um, priorities, is economic inclusion. Uh, the mayor wants to make sure that uh, out of the $183 million budget that the Housing Authority operates annually, we try to keep as much of that funding locally, either through local hires or uh, hiring local vendors. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, successes, as a matter of fact, uh, right off the bat, we entered into a partnership with uh, the Laborers International Local. Uh, they, they're training Newark residents to work in our apartments. Are these uh, tenants? Tenants, correct. <coughs> tenants and Newark <coughs> residents, both. So right now we've just hired 38 new employees to help us with apartment turnover. Uh, so you're rehabbing the correct. apartments? Correct. Okay. That's correct. Uh, when I came in, <coughs> we had a backlog of about 525 units that were just sitting idle. So I said this is a great opportunity for us to uh, involve the community, uh, get people jobs, and, 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 and make sure that there was a, a economic inclusion. So to date, we've uh, turned over around 57 apartments in the last three months. Or the kind of work that you're doing is all rehab, and I, I guess you Correct. would say. But is there any new facilities being built? Um, that's these, a these are all lower le level uh Housing. Units that you put up in recent years before your before your tenure, right? That's 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 correct. Um, as you know, the housing authorities are also a redevelopment authority. So uh, we have a real estate arm and we have a public housing arm. So on the public housing side, we manage the housing that we just spoke about. We turn the apartments over. On the redevelopment side, we have over a, over a billion dollars in assets. We're the biggest landlord in the city of Newark. And then we use those assets to uh, assist uh, the city uh, move economic development forward. Some of the projects that we've been involved with in the last three months uh, include um, uh, uh, we're working with the city uh, on, uh, on the uh, uh, police and training facility. Uh, we're working on uh, uh, putting together a vision for uh, 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 Baxter Terrace, the old Baxter Terrace on, on That's Central That's up on Orange, Orange Street. Correct. Yep. We have a vision uh, for that uh, along in partnership with the city. Uh, 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 an item that has been in the news as of late is Terrell Homes over by the Ironbound. Uh, we're working on demolition there and, and building new housing uh, for the existing residents. So uh, on the development side, there's been a lot of progress in the last three or four months. And uh, your staff, how big is the Housing Authority staff? At its peak, the Housing Authority employed over 1,100 people. Uh, we're down to about uh, 500 and change. Um, and you're, you're located at 500 Broad Street, I believe? Correct. That's uh, 500 Broad Street is the central office, but we have uh, 24 different offices throughout the city, uh, local uh, administrative offices for, uh, for the uh, properties. Well, I'm sure the whole area of redevelopment and housing is constantly evolving. Uh, you know, do you have to prepare yourself educationally, or do you have to uh, attend a lot of seminars, things to kind of see what other cities are doing or what other communities are doing with the, this whole issue of housing you know it's a it's a national concern sure you know finding uh decent affordable housing uh, uh you know to maintain i noticed recently there was a an issue in new york city where i believe the executive director uh you know was 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 changed because you know a lot of the units weren't being kept up to sure. a certain standard so th that's that's a a, a very ambitious uh 
effort to try to keep all of the different units in state in, in shape. You, see, you mentioned before how many units you have? Right now, we we manage uh, about uh, 10,000. And in addition to that, we have vouchers that we manage throughout the city, uh, rental vouchers. What would they be called, Section 8? Section 8 vouchers, Section correct. Section 8, yeah. Uh, yeah. No vouchers. So, like, what's your, your goals? What kind of charge have you got from the mayor? Uh, sure. About uh, your work, uh, you know, he wants to get Newarkers employed, right. and he wants money spent mm -hmm. with vendors in the city. Isn't that kind That's of in correct. a nutshell? Yeah, economic development uh, was big uh, when I interviewed. Uh, the second item was uh, quality customer service, customer service, making sure that uh, we're listening to our residents, making sure that we're getting some feedback as far as like how we're doing from a property management perspective. Uh, the mayor was not happy with the way the housing authority was responding uh, to the uh, a client base and the population. Um, uh, so, so that was a, another a second charge, and then number three was a charge between the uh, uh, you know the city and uh, the board of commissioners, and that is to bring financial solvency to the housing authority. Uh, we started this year with a, um, a million and a half in the hole, uh, so we're trying to make that up throughout the year, so that by the end, hopefully, we can balance the budget and have some solvency going forward. You know, speaking of maintaining the uh, ten thousand plus units, you sure. must you must have a pretty extensive craft uh, component, you know, with plumbers, electricians, carpenters, everything else to kind of keep, you know, many of these units uh, in shape. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we or are you trying to train some of the tenants to uh, acquire those skills? Well, well we should uh, long term, but as you know, uh, it's a it's a, a really it's a professional skill that it's not difficult to uh, teach. Um, and uh, but uh, if the opportunity arises, absolutely. I, we, we mentioned uh, some of the properties that are still up from the 30s and the 40s, and, and those properties bring significant challenges. Uh, uh, it's not uh, within uh, an element of surprise to see um, uh, you know, one of those steam pipes uh, uh, rupture on the ground, and it happened twice during this, this past winter. Um, uh, and 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 that that significant cost. So yes, I mean plumbing and 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 and, and pipe fitters and all that. We 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 we're, we're always in need. Um, I'm looking to expand the central maintenance department because uh, when you, it's easier to um, it has become easier to have your own staff as opposed to contracting that work out. You know, Newark was considered a leader uh, in urban renewal. Correct. Uh, and. You know, uh, sometimes there's a debate whether the high rises were the answer, uh, you know, uh, that were built in the 50s. I mean, you know, uh, what's your philosophy as far as that's concerned? You know, what, what really works? I mean, I know you inherited, you know, you know, many of these units, and uh, but, you know, your mindset would be, you know, there seemed to be a tendency, you know, several uh, years ago and in the last decade to do tear down some of these high rises. and and replace them with lower level uh, housing units. Sure, uh, and let's go back to the conversation about Mr. Danzig. So Mr. Danzig comes in in the mid, 40, uh, mid 40s, the, and then at that point, the federal government passes something called the Housing Act of 1949, Title I, Urban Renewal Money for Cities, to, um, to fight against urban uh, uh, blight. Um, so uh, Mr. Danzig uh, took it upon himself to be more proactive than the average city. Uh, and Newark became a model city with respect to utilizing urban renewal funds and, and developing uh, uh, throughout, uh, knocking down a lot of the neighborhoods. I think of uh, Columbus Homes, for rises. example. That's the first property, yeah, correct. The, that was built around St. Lucie's. Uh, correct. Colum you had Columbus Homes. You had the Central Ward. They raised 60 acres of neighborhoods uh, in, in the Central Ward. Uh, Seeing Hall Law School. Uh, that whole area was built under the urban renewal uh, program of the Housing Authority. Uh, the uh, Rutgers University, Newark, was expanded under the Housing Authority's urban renewal initiatives. Penn Plaza in front of the train station. So it was not only housing, but also just redevelopment in general uh, that uh, came about from taking advantage of that uh, uh, urban renewal program. You know, Newark, New Jersey seems to be very hot now as we speak. You know, there's a lot of buzz about the city. Uh, in terms of economic development and uh, the potential for new businesses, you know, to move in the city. You know, the uh, question of Amazon is still right. not resolved, but it would be a tremendous uh, impetus to the city in terms of, you know, good paying jobs. And, you know, M&M's is, you know, relocating from Hackettstown back to Newark. And there's just a whole 
excitement that you know New York is finally on the on the cusp where it's going to move forward in terms of uh, opportunities and you know uh, establish itself as the center for the arts and culture and things like that. So, do we have the housing in place, you know, to handle this, or is it still something that we're, is on the drawing board that needs to be uh, implemented and move forward with? Sure. Let's talk about uh, so so two issues: Amazon. Uh, and my opinion, as government, is that uh, with respect to Amazon, this is the best deal going. Not only is it a good financial deal for Amazon as it relates to the uh, amount of credits that are being extended and offered to Amazon, so financially it's a good deal for Amazon. And if they want to be an uh, an instrument in uh, providing social change, as uh, in a city, this is the best opportunity. No, okay, it's, it's about good jobs. Correct. I, mean, I emphasize good jobs. I right. mean, not not minimum wage jobs, but jobs with substance that will have you know a fair amount of benefits and things right. like that that will really you know really uplift the city and change the face as that's far as why, uh, opportunities are concerned. Correct, and that's why uh, the city of Newark is attractive. Is an attractive. Uh, uh, site potential site for for Amazon again. Well, it has all the things. With tr transportation is a right <coughs> a big issue with the port, with the airport, uh, with trains, we you know with major highways, things like that. So it's it's actually you know um, you know conducive you know to this economic development. That's correct. And then going forward uh, on on your second question, uh, you asked about a rule. Uh, our role will be to uh, make sure that there's a continuous availability of affordable housing as the city, um, uh, and I don't want to use the term gentrifies, as the city uh, repopulates, uh, we, we need to make sure that the folks that stayed and invested the low, you know, or perhaps are, are, you know, are in need of either affordable or, or middle income housing, uh, we are there for them and we're able to provide uh, that, that, that avail, you know, that, that those, uh, those options. Um, right now we're sitting on about uh, 35 acres of land waiting for Amazon to make a decision that the, the housing authority owns. Uh, and if, should the Amazon deal uh, not work out, then we're going to move forward and start a, um, a rent to purchase program. We want to make homeowners in the city of Newark. Do you work closely with the Newark Community Economic Development Corporation? We, we absolutely do, and that the Housing Authority has a history of working together, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two groups I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about uh, with senior citizens, you know, uh, you know, the population is aging, uh, are there any special provisions uh, in place, or, or are there adequate units, you know, to uh, handle that need, you know, of, of people who have a long history in the, in the city, but have family and ties and don't want to move. I mean, how do we how do we work with them to, you know, to make sure, sure that they uh, have a decent place to live? Right. Um, what what our our vision um, is to uh, take advantage of a program that the housing authority has made. I'm sorry that the F HUD, the federal government, has made available called RAD, Rental Assistance Demonstration Program. Under that program, we take the senior citizen high rise. Let's say 900 Franklin or yeah. uh, they're Seth pretty, they're very well maintained. I might add. Thank you. So yeah. we take that property and we put it into a holding company and then take a mortgage against that building so that we can rehab and, re and modernize the property going forward so we can extend the lifespan. Basically, uh, uh, HUD for the first time is allowing housing authorities to, to take on debt on those properties so that we can modernize and fix all those units, repaint, uh, 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 change the plumbing, the waste lines, uh, the lobbies, the building envelope, the roofs. So that's a program that I, I, I implemented in Passaic. All the senior buildings were put into this RAD program, Rental Assistance Demonstration Program, and now I'm looking to do the same thing in Newark uh, for our senior population. What about millennials? I mean, uh, you know, Newark is, you know, you see more and more people that are not using their cars the way they used to. They they want to be convenient to mass transportation, buses, trains, things like that. They're going into New York City for uh, employment, and you know there's a need to be met. And a lot of times they're coming uh, out of college or graduate school and, and just don't have the economics to, you know, buy a house or, or buy a condominium. But you know they they you know they want to uh, you know be part of the city life. So I mean. Do we have any things that work uh, out of the ordinary for, you know, people in that income bracket? Sure, we have several acres on uh, Lincoln Park by the uh, is it the uh, Victoria uh, Hotel uh, right by Clinton. 
Um, yeah, that's used to be the Father Divine. I guess you, you know, that was a Riviera Hotel. I think the you, Riviera Hotel, correct. Yes, okay. So we have so we have property there that we're looking to build condos for middle income, like for sale, for sell condos. Yes. Uh, so um, we want to continue the expansion of the Lincoln Park uh, uh, revitalization. Well, they're all brownstones in the area, and correct. a lot of people have moved in there. They, in fact, I was in a building, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and I was, you know, guy told me he was 100 years old, but it was very well rehabbed and put back in shape. You know, there's a lot of history around the Lincoln Park and, you know, monuments and things like that. It's, you know, it's, it's conducive. Correct, and, and that's what we want to do our share. We, we already have architects looking at developing uh, models with aesthetics that blend in with the architecture that you just spoke about. And what, what we're going to build is a mix, mixed use, uh, condos for sale along with uh, uh, shopping options right next to the hotel. Uh, we have uh, uh, just, just land just sitting there waiting for us to uh, be, be more proactive. I'm just curious, like the federal policy uh, about public housing, uh, under this uh, administration, is that drying up, or are they cutting back, uh, or are, you, are they putting you through more uh, hoops to, you know, secure uh, resources? I mean, what, what's you know, you you you've had sure. experiences in, in two major cities in the state, Passaic and. In Newark, I mean, I'm just curious about the mentality that exists federally as we speak. Yeah, I mean, we went through the economic, uh, uh, the economy uh, uh, and its issues uh, in the late, uh, you know, 2010s or 2009s. We struggled, and actually, that's how this RAD program started because HUD wanted to um, uh, get out of the business and allow us to uh, privatize these buildings and, and start taking on debt so that we can keep them going. But as it relates to the current administration, uh, I have to say that Congress was very generous this year. Um, uh, and I don't know, I don't know if it's because the administration uh, or the executive branch is not really familiar with the programming, so they allow Congress to dictate levels of financing. But uh, we had a very generous uh, you know, just, just funding levels at the same as, as previous years as what we're used to on the public housing side and the Section 8 side. Um, on the uh, uh, regulatory side, um, the, the, the HUD is moving towards liberalizing a lot of the rules, deregulating, which is an advantage for us because it makes our job easier. We can move some of these initiatives a lot faster. So um, the new administration is both um, uh, embracing deregulation and they're embracing uh, more of a private sector approach to managing these properties, which I, I, I love because it allows us a lot more freedom to be creative. Uh, like, like we talked about, those senior buildings being, we, we can partner with, uh, with, the with the private sector and, and, and start uh, de developing financial relationships that will keep those units affordable uh, while bringing in a windfall to, to rehab. So, um, so far, so good, Assemblyman. Uh Home ownership, you know, is is a critical element a lot of times in terms of rehabbing uh, neighborhoods or you know or strengthening them. In fact, uh, sometimes when you ride throughout the city, you'll notice abandoned ho abandoned houses or houses have been neglected. I mean, uh, has the housing authority ever looked at that about trying to give home ownership to uh, folks? Uh, maybe at certainly a reduced rate with the proviso. Maybe they rehab it or you rehab mm -hmm. it just to kind of, you know, uh, you know, you can't tear everything down as sure. we all know, but just the idea is to keep some of these uh, older homes to try to put them back on the, on the tax rolls and, you know, uh, you know, a lot of them are a large size and can hold, you know, you know, a two or three uh, families where they could generate rental income. So, I mean, is there any uh, effort being made in that vein? I tell you, every time I drive through the uh, neighborhoods uh, in the city, uh, it's just, uh, you, you, get, you get nostalgia. You could tell that there was a history there. You drive through the Clinton Hills, you drive through the Roseville oh, section. You, you have some beautiful you, homes there. You have some beautiful homes just sitting yeah. there, and uh, you can tell that they went through a difficult uh, uh, economic situation, you know, whether it be uh, uh, foreclosures or, you know, it's just flight, yeah, just uh, whatever. Abandoned, yeah, you know, you know. abandonment. Um, so there is so much potential in the city. I tell you what I did in Passaic. In Passaic, I created a nonprofit corporation, a development corporation. And what I did was I uh, I was able to um, uh, bring in uh, private funds along with federal funds in the form of CDBG or home money. And I was able to package that and buy homes so I, that we I can rehab. I noticed uh, 
I think it's up in Orange or the Valley there, there's a program called Hands. Are you, are you familiar with it? There's, yeah. there's a man, Pat Morrissey, that I guess is the executive director. But that concept about you know, trying to rehab uh, you know, properties, uh, I'm not sure of the, you know, the conduit about how they get their money, but you know, they, I've seen a lot of successes where they've gone in and you know, uh, turned a, an abandoned property around or, or deteriorated property and you know, like I said, get people in there, they get some rental income and get it back on the tax rolls. Exactly, and there are programs out there. You know, use a, no, a nonprofit corporation as an anchor to 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 rehabbing and redeveloping and and and, and bringing back these neighborhoods. Yep. I want to thank, uh, thank Director uh, Victor Cirillo uh, for appearing on the uh, Giblin Report. Uh, the Newark uh, Housing and uh, Redevelopment Authority is celebrating uh, its 80th anniversary uh, as we speak. Uh, they have a long, long history of meeting the needs of uh, housing uh, for many people, uh, seniors and you know people at middle income or, or lower uh, as far as their wages are, are concerned. It's a very, very uh, ambitious job. Uh, Director Cirillo comes to that position with a, a long uh, commitment. I, I don't want to say a lifetime. You're, you're a young man, but certainly you've had <laughs> different experiences in Dover and Passaic and now uh, in Newark. Uh, if people want to reach you or, you know, uh, get better acquainted with the Newark Housing Authority, uh, whether it be uh, developers or tenants, or how would they do that? Sure, our website, newarkha.org, newarkha.org. We're on Facebook at the Housing Authority of the City of Newark, or uh, on Twitter at, at NewarkPHA. Are there any special celebrations planned for your 80th anniversary? There will be. Like a big cake or something like that? Uh, there yeah. will be in the next few weeks. We'll have a big celebration. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll make sure you're invited and all okay. of our guests. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you might not have enough room. Okay. Uh, I want to thank once again uh, Director Cirillo, uh, the Executive Director of the Newark Housing and uh, Redevelopment Authority. If you have any pressing issues that require my attention or any questions regarding current legislation, you can contact me at 973-779-3125 uh, for more information. <laughs> you can go to my website at www.assemblymangiblin.com. Thanks for watching the Giblin Report. And remember, if it's an issue to you, it's an issue to me. Thank you, Director Thank you Victor Cirillo. Much.